unfortunately, being professional wrestling fans of some kind or another, all of us are all too familiar with the specter of a wrestler past or present passing away. It just, unfortunately, over the years, over the last several decades, has become part of the territory. So, you almost worry sometimes that when something sad or tragic happens, like a man being struck down in the prime of his life, like John Huber, you know, known as Brody Lee in AEW or Luke Harper in WWE, you worry that you won't get to the gravitas of the impact. You won't, you know, show the right amount of emotion or compassion or sympathy because you've been through it so many times. You can only burn that emotional candle so much. Um, but I will say this: that you know, this one is a little bit different. Like this isn't just like a a legend of the past that we've seen far too many of pass over the years, um, you know, being taken from this world. Like, this was somebody that was still, for all intents and purposes, an, an active in-ring competitor that you had just recently seen on television. It was just a couple of months ago, uh, the AEW TNT champion. So, well, this is different. Like, this is, usually don't say his name, but this time I will like a Chris Benoit tribute show, an Eddie Guerrero tribute show, an Owen Hart tribute show. Like, this is the type of level of impact and uniqueness that this kind of has, right? I'm mentioning people that when they passed, you know, especially the cases of Owen as tragic as that was, and Eddie is uh, sudden and sad as that was and surprising as that was like you think back on those shows like those were emotional nights for everybody involved with that the WWE time or WWF uh, people throughout professional wrestling and certainly millions of professional wrestling fans and I don't think tonight watching AEW it was any different like, this felt like one of those really well done, well executed, uh, emotional shows. Like an Owen Hart tribute. Like an Eddie Guerrero tribute. In different circumstances, but still, I think you get kind of the gist. And it's incredibly interesting when you watch a show like this. And, and, and let's be clear. You know, outside of just, you know, having feelings and having compassion for your fellow man and woman like it is very irrational behavior for so many people to be talking about getting tears and crying about the passing of somebody that for many 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 people tweeting about it and talking about it they never met the man they don't know him from a hole in the ground they don't like it seems like incredibly irrational behavior but if anything it speaks to the the power and the platform that entertainers and performers have and how they become a piece of your identity and a part of your life. So it is irrational. That doesn't make it bad. Not everything that's rational is good. Not everything that's irrational is bad. Love, in many ways, is incredibly irrational. And can certainly be the thing that leads to your downfall, but love can all and passion can be the thing that brings you your greatest success as well. So, you know, when you when you think about the measure of an individual and the measure of a man or a woman, you know, in this case, John Huber, a man, as a as a friend, a coworker, a husband, a father. Like, when you see the legitimate outpouring of support and the outpouring of love and admiration and respect for this man, it's clear that he lived a very fulfilled and very rich life. And he is somebody that all of us should look at our lives 
and use this as a learning experience because that's what life is all about. It's all about learning and it's all about, um, you know, making the best out of what you got and realizing that as long as you breathe, as long as you've got a pulse and as long as you're above ground, that it's never too late. This was a this was a phenomenal show tonight that AEW put on. Like tonight, I'm not a critic. We'll go back to that next week, and we'll get over it by then. Um, not tonight, though. As my respect to everybody involved with the production of Dynamite tonight, because that's an incredibly tough and difficult circumstance and situation to be involved in. I, I can only imagine. Now, I've experienced it myself throughout my childhood and my adult life, like having people that you knew or you were associated with or you're familiar with, you're friends with, you worked with, um, there one day and gone the next. Like, that's tough. That's the real life shit. Like, that's, that's final, you know, that's permanent. Like, that's really, really tough. And to be able to cope the way that they did, and so many of those guys and gals in that company, whether they were performing on TV or they were behind the scenes working, like they absolutely deserve to be saluted for putting on a worthy tribute for a very, 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 it seems like, worthy man in John Huber. Because that it cannot be easy. But it, it, it's, it's got a, a calming sense, a therapeutic value. And certainly want to thank uh, those people involved with AEW that stepped up to the plate and hit a home run tonight. As it's certainly not easy again, and for a lot of wrestling fans, it was part of that grieving process. It's part of that learning to deal with it. And in a year of so much loss and so much negativity, you know, it's It can be hard because you become very desensitized to it. But it's clear to see that a lot of people were not desensitized to this, and it significantly impacted them. So, my props, 100. Respect, 100. For everybody involved with AEW in this show. And, you know, if there's going to be people that are saying, well, you exploited the wife and you exploited the son, you know, if they were given the opportunity to do it and they wanted to do it, then that's their business and fuck off right am I right don't be a bitch fuck off seriously um but the way they they work the family in throughout the course of the night and getting to hear from so many of the different talents like you can tell it's not easy for them obviously and hearing some of the shit stories and uh, the experiences shared like it's cool to know about these people because they are people we think of them as characters we think about them as performers we think about them like i don't like this person i love this person but it's kind of fascinating when you when you peel back the curtains unfortunately it always seems to happen in tragic circumstances like this like be able to pull back the curtain and find out what really motivated the man and what drove him and what made him who he was. And again, I talk about there will be people that financially were much richer than John Huber. There are people in wrestling uh, that made more money than John Huber, had more spotlight, were bigger stars. You know, but when you, when you look at a man like him and you say, what really matters? Because all that money in the world and all the notoriety and the fame and the success is great, but it's fleeting. And you can't take it with you. What's the legacy that you believe behind? It is very clear, I think everybody can agree, that this man apparently left a fantastic legacy, one that he should be proud of, one that his wife should be proud of, his two sons should be incredibly proud of, and all of us should aspire uh, to kind of live up to that standard, to think about the importance of leaving a legacy 
and having that be a legacy that you would be proud of. You know, I that the match with that kind of one hour main event, that tag match with the Dark Order, and then here comes Eric Rowan, like that was a legit pop moment. Like that was that was freaking awesome. It's so well timed and so like frankly, yeah, you know, I was looking at that match as going on like, why in the heck wasn't this the main event? Like how could anything else really follow this? Well, it's okay. <laughs> Again, gotta turn the critic hat off for one night. It's okay. Um, but then you see MJF, the commitment to being in character, the commitment to the story, the commitment to the product. Maxwell Jacob Friedman, you magnificent beast. That's right. Fuck that kid. <laughs> Negative one. He whacked MJF with that freaking kendo stick right in the head. Got a good clean shot in. I can't wait to see this play out as a storyline in 15 years on TNT, Lord willing. Um, like that was a cool moment. Like where people, you, know, you look at a character like MJF, you say, you know, you're supposed to be one of the top stars. You don't want to be making yourself look like a fool. But on the other hand, you're like, well, this is the only thing that matters. And this absolutely works. And this absolutely has to happen. And you almost wonder if he insisted on it happening. I wouldn't be surprised if he did. Um, really, really, really cool. And the, the way they did it and the talk about retiring the current design of the TNT title. I think that's appropriate. That's a cool, nice gesture. Uh, the video package at the end was incredibly well done. Like, it's really, throughout the night, you see all the, all the wrestlers, all the talent, like, so... So emotionally impacted by this. And again, justifiably and understandably so. But it really comes full circle at the end of the night. Like, you know, you see that video package and you see him, you see uh, Brody pictured with all these people that he's worked with from AEW and certainly from his long time with WWE. And it, that's when the reality hits you like, man, them pictures aren't that old. And now he's gone. Like if that isn't the ultimate reminder of just how truly precious life is and how important it is, is to grab life by the sack and drain every bit of babies from it you possibly can. That is a horrible metaphor to use right now, Jeff. But you guys get the point. Squeeze every bit of juice that you can out of life because tomorrow is not promised to anyone. But I think another thing, and this is always an unintentional tragedy to me, but it is a reality of life. It's a reality of wrestling as well. Like too often, we wait until people are gone and people are dead to let them know how much they really mean to us. And how much we appreciate them, how much we love them, how much our lives were positively impacted by them. And that's really unfortunate and that's really sad. So I hope as you watched AEW Dynamite tonight, or maybe as you're listening to me kind of ramble on my diatribe here, that you think about that. And you think about those people that truly matter to you, those people that truly made a difference to you. Don't wait until they're gone to let them know how much you appreciate them, how much you, they mean to you, how they positively benefited and impacted you, how much you love them. And I don't care who that other person is, it's a significant other friend, family member, coworker, boss, you know, whoever it is. And make sure you take that time to show that appreciation uh, before it's too late, because you never know. Wouldn't you rather put all those cards out on the table so that way, that person, you could say, well, they knew. Yeah, they might have known how you felt. But it doesn't mean that they don't want to hear it. And it also doesn't mean that they don't deserve to hear it. They absolutely do. So I guess maybe I'm issuing a little bit of a challenge to everybody. Like, you can certainly, in the comments, talk about the tribute show, what you enjoyed about it. You know, talk about your favorite memories of Luke Harper or Brody Lee or John Huber, you know, whatever the case might be. Favorite matches, favorite moments, favorite segments, like whatever you want to talk about, that's fine. Um, but 
one other thing that I maybe like to challenge you guys in the comments to talk about is somebody in your life that's still alive that has positively impacted you a lot. Somebody in your life that has really meant the world to you, that has represented positive things, that you want to make sure that you let them know just how much they mean to you. And you can feel free to divulge or not divulge whatever details you want. But I think that's important. Like, focus on what matters. Focus on who's important. And if you forgive me for just a second, come here, sweetheart. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Oh. Somebody is not happy right now. Take some. I know you usually don't do dynamite. Summer. 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 Why'd you leave Piglet alone? You guys see this? Summer, you usually see... She ju I just woke her up, so she is not particularly happy at the moment. But, you know... I've had Summer for about seven and a half years now. It's been a long time. And, you know, it, she has certainly meant the world to me, just like her sister Piglet down there has. Um, I've had Piglet for almost five years now. But, you know, summer Summer's old school at this point. She goes back to when Smokey was still around. Some of you might remember slumber parties and all of that. You know, and talking about Mark Henry versus Roman Reigns, main eventing WrestleMania someday, you know, that still should have happened. I like guess still technically could happen. But you also know that Summer, uh, a couple of months ago, I talked to you guys about the fact that um, she had a grade two mammary carcinoma. It was greater than, I think, three or four centimeters that we had to get removed off of her. So very expensive, but absolutely worth it. Um, you know, good thing is we just got back from... Oh my goodness, yes, I know. You usually don't care unless it's Roman Reigns. I know. You'll be on the SmackDown review Friday, I promise. Um, but, you know, you look at... She just went to the vet the other day, did another set of x-rays. There has been no spread. So we go and start her chemotherapy on January the 18th, so MLK Day. Um, but I just wanted everybody to know, like, how much happiness that this bratty beagle has provided me the past seven and a half years. How much I love this damn dog. You guys may think you know, you probably have a, a, a sense or an understanding, but, you know, this dog's meant a lot to me, continues to mean a lot to me every day. You know, whereas people are not always the best to you, people are not loyal, they come and go from your life. Like the one constant, she's always here. She's the one that's there to pick me up after a bad day. She's the one that's there to remind me of what's really important versus what's not. You're the one summer that I think about. And I say, you know, when they talk about man's best friend, this, this is the picture of man's best friend. And, you know... If I remember, you guys remember back in 2012, 2013, if you go back on the channel for a long time, like some of you do, not, not many of you don't, you're like, what the hell are you even talking about? Maybe you know some because of old videos, but you remember I used to have the three cats, and within the course of the year, within a year from October 2012 to October 2013, it was in rapid fire succession. Feisty passed away. That was the girl cat. She was October 2012. Precious, the old man, the seasoned vet. Um, you know, he was passed away in May, what was May 2013, and then Smokey passed away in October. Um, you know, Summer was really, really, really a very, very positive uh, part of my life at that time because she helped me deal with a lot of loss. Like, it's, it's rough. That's, that's tough to deal with a lot in that time. And she certainly, certainly um, made a huge difference to me. Like, gave me hope and 
gave me that type of unconditional love that I wasn't getting from anybody else. Am I right? Am I right? Yeah, you know, that's right. That's why you're here with dad. You're right, because daddy's number one. Um, I mean, you don't give a shit. You just want to have some treats. But, you know, I just want everybody to know, like, I wish I could say, you know, humans, there are probably humans that I, I could say that's to some degree. But frankly, when it comes to people, like in some cases, people I've been involved with or people I've been associated with over the years have not been great. And in some cases, I'm a fucking idiot. So, you know, I have, you know, not valued friendships as much as I have, 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 should have. I have not made them as important as they should have. So I certainly have plenty of culpability, accountability, and responsibility there. Um, so like I said, it was a wonderful tribute show to, for all accounts, a wonderful man. Um, make sure you tell somebody that you know and love just how much they mean to you and how important they are to you because you never know from one day to the next if they'll be with you or not. Now you on the other hand, young lady, you're not going anywhere. You're going to get this chemo and you're going to fight this and you're going to beat this. That's right. That's what you're going to do. You have plenty more years of fangirling for Roman Reigns. That's right. That's right. But, again, you feel free to talk about in the comments, like, how much you enjoyed this week's review show, if you did, or not the review show, fuck my review, how much you enjoyed the um, tribute show, uh, talk about your favorite memories and moments from the career of John Huber, uh, and feel free as well to share any stories about anybody that really made a difference in your life, and you want to make sure that the whole world knows about. Thank you, Summer. You're the, you're the boss of this house. Everybody knows it. That's right. Yeah, that's right. I know. Thank you, guys.